Hello again, everybody. This is Michael, KE4EST. And today we're going to have a look at this Heath Kit model IM 28 vacuum tube voltmeter. Um, got this in a couple days ago. And, you know, a lot of times I'll get these in and sometimes I'll shoot the video, this initial video, a few weeks ahead of time before I even go through the rest of the restore process or anything like that because I guess like a kid or whatever I'm always curious to see what's inside this thing when you get one it's unknown what's going on inside what story does it tell so let me get a little bit of light on here so anyway this is like I said the Heath kit I am 28 and I've been kind of wanting something like this for a while I'm going to actually take and restore this and use it. I've got, you seen the other, I'm going to bring it over there. Maybe get that out of the way. You can kind of see the other one there. I restored an earlier video several months back, and maybe a year ago now. I've been uh, using that a lot, a whole lot. I've got handheld analog meters and stuff like that, but I just forgot how nice it is to have a nice one on the bench. And that thing's pretty accurate, you know, for 1940, 1939, whatever it was, something like that. But, you know, it's kind of small, uh, still. Let's put us back on this one here, and, you know, you got the nice big meter, and so if this I get this restored and get it working good this will be really good meter um, and it'll go right up there and it's going to be used all the time so anyway um, it don't look too bad it's going to clean up real easy I think the face is in really good condition there's a few scuffs on it and I already took and went over it a couple times just with some just to see what would come out of it and it came right out really good so there's some more I need to go back over it and what I use is um, I've got this set of stuff here let's see uh, not a sponsor or anything this is just what I use uh, let me get this off several different places and I think Amazon too this is number two they come in one two and three and three is for really heavy scratches and then you go to two then you go down to one one is something you know almost like just something you use to wipe down your monitor with or your glasses or whatever just really a cleaner it ain't got any abrasive in it um but i just used number two to start with because it's not real abrasive and it's it buffed out really good so that's what i use but anyway um okay this has got one thing about this thing i know is i went and took the screws out of it and try to keep from peeking inside of it but it's got you gotta take out one, two, three screws on the back, or on the bottom. There is one, two, three screws across the top, and six in the back. One, two, three, four, five, six screws in the back. So, yeah, and whoever put these in really cranked them down. I broke the tip on uh, my smaller screwdriver because usually you know these are kind of hand tight you know you don't really torque them in there and I don't know they was really really tight so anyway um, I uh, already got them out ready to go and I'll mention again anytime you're working with anything like this just make sure you take care know what you're doing if you're not familiar with tube type stuff or you're not comfortable with doing it don't do it you know learn more about it before you do because there's high voltages present in all these things and you can get hurt real bad real quick okay so this should just slide on out of here yeah okay, I can already tell you not looking at it, that it is definitely was a kit somebody put together. 
Back in the day, you could get these. Most of this stuff was in the kit, but you could buy them pre-assembled and cost more. A lot of the Heath kit stuff. But this one here, let's see. Let's bring this around, zoom in on it a little bit. Maybe not that much. I don't know what's going on here, but that wire is just taut all the way across. You can see that. Get it here so you can see the dimensions of it. Going over to the battery holder, which doesn't have a battery in it. Um, let me see if I can get this on here. See what I'm talking about. Of course, when these were pre-assembled for you, if you just wanted to pay more and not build it, it's still all hand-built. You know, the way this thing, this point-to-point -point wiring, it wasn't machine-built. It didn't run through a bunch of robots or anything like some circuit boards nowadays, but... If I can get... Yeah, you can see that. See where there's... Somebody stuck a sword and iron trying to reach in here and hit that. There's a few other places like that I see in here. Um, but anyway, so... Right off the bat, you can see this capacitor here's got to go. Okay. And this neon lamp here, I don't know, I like to keep these things as original as possible. It's like you can buy, you know, make one yourself really easy. Or you can grab them off eBay. I see all the time these battery eliminators for these these meters, let's see where the battery goes in here. You can see where the battery goes in right there. These battery eliminators. These things are real easy on batteries. They'll last a long time unless you just leave, put it on ohms and put your test leads and hold them together. So, I mean, a couple of years or so before you really have to replace the battery. It's no big deal there. So I like to keep the battery in there. And... Um, Let's see. Okay. And like I was saying, I want to probably see that. And there's a, the neon lamp. Um, I can see right away up here, too. It's got silicone, half wave, just silicone dive for a rectifier there. So I don't have to worry about changing out anything like that, like I did in the other meter. But I'll still probably change that out anyway. Um, sometimes these do fail. They're not like the selenium rectifiers. I could change it out and a couple other things you've seen me do. But I'll probably go ahead and change it out. Um, Real easy to do, easy to get to. When you get something like this, you never just plug it in. If you're at a swap meet or somewhere and somebody's looking at one or you go to somebody's house or whatever, and they're like, hey, let me, let me plug this in for you. It's like, just tell them, no, no, that's okay. If you're really interested in it, you want it, you're going to restore it. Say, no, that's okay. Um, I don't want to plug it in because I see it all the time. I seen one the other day just flipping through eBay. This guy had, I think it was some sort of oscilloscope can't remember which one it was but anyway he said this is for my dad he passed away it was on his he liked tinkering electronics don't know anything about it but i see the front where it says oscilloscope and i'm looking through the side i can see vacuum tubes so it must be real old and then he went to the next line where i did plug it in and the indicator the lamp come on the front and then in about 30 seconds smoke started boiling out of it so he unplugged it real quick he said so there it is as is <laughs> so i'm like oh no 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 so you know i wouldn't even want that could have fried something you know transformer sometimes and they're harder to get a hold of so you know when you get these things don't plug them in just of course you don't know when the last time somebody did have it plugged in so you don't hurt to go through and discharge capacitors anyway uh that there that looks like a 1600 volt capacitor okay so i replaced i have to replace that um, you know, these capacitors could be good, could not with this one, it may be, but it's just, it's old, it's got to go. These things were made in the late 60s and early 70s. 
So not 40s, but still got to go. This capacitor here is going to have to go. The one back in there, if you can see that. Get, uh, get it just right here. Yeah, you can barely see it. Yeah, there it is. That'll be a little bit interesting to get to, but got to get that going. Uh, this capacitor, let's see. Let's, why is that light doing that? Getting reflections off of this thing and then making shadows at the same time. This capacitor here will have to go. So one, two, three, four capacitors. Not, not a big deal. I'll change out the diode, the neon lamp. Like I started to say, I may change that out to an LED circuit um, just because I hate when they start flickering and then it sits there for a few months before you finally get to it and you got to pull it out and you got to change it and everything else could be fine, but I don't know. Of course, you should go through and recalibrate things ever so often anyway, but uh, there's two capacitors here. Right here you can see one down here. This capacitor here. And this one here. These are disc type. They hardly ever fail, so I'm not worried about those. I'll leave those in there. The resistors. Of course. And the uh circuit here we won't be changing any of those out unless it just completely failed for some reason because these are all purposely set and designed so the meter accuracy is right and they're usually very high precision resistors anyway but we'll check the rest of them what's going on there right there is somebody has the wire and then the resistor and it's wrapped around each other and soldered um and there's almost it's like well, it's not soldered good so i'll check all that um, but this is relatively not too bad some allen bradley resistors some look like they might that might be a roundy so let's have to check them out and replace what needs replacing on those but uh, clean it up some of this wiring i may move around a little bit this here is going from here across over to the battery i guess it's not that big a deal but kind of interesting it's got some solder iron burn on it or somebody reaching in here for something and hit it with solder and iron check the tubes out do all that stuff before i even turn it on then i'll put it on the variac and bring it up slowly Okay, we can see a couple things here. This, the meter itself, has got a date of August 9th, 1971 on it. Which I don't mean when this was put together, or it was put together to uh, ship out. It just means when this meter itself was made. But there's a place in here to write. Okay, this is interesting. Somebody sent this into Heathkit. To have it serviced. There's a service sticker in here. Let's see if I can get that. We can see that. Right there. See that service sticker right there? And I know a camera ain't gonna make that out. They've scratched in with like a nail or something or an awl. Looks like January 15th, 72. Okay, so all these things, if you ever built a Heathkit or if you haven't built one, if you look in the old Heathkit manuals, you can download or you buy one. It'll say troubleshooting guide, go through the alignment procedure and the troubleshooting guide. And if you run into trouble on this, absolutely, you just cannot get something, whatever. You can send it in to us, you know, for a fee and we'll have one of our technicians get it going for you or fix the problem or whatever. So somebody sent this in um, in 72. So, 71, 72, somewhere in there. Probably was built in 71. 
Um, and then, of course, this is the first January 15th, 72, on the service center. Fix something in it, so. Um, that dates it right there. But anyway, so that's what's going to happen. Clean everything up as usual. Check the tubes. Change out those four caps. Change out the diode. Check the resistors and all that. And then I'll... Before I... Uh, and the next video, instead of making three or four videos, I'll try to do is make the next video where I'll show you what I did to it. And then we'll plug it up. We'll turn it on. See how it works. Make sure everything's working. We'll go through the alignment procedure. And... Um, together and get it going and go from there so anyway stay tuned for that that'll be here in a week or so uh, and I'll have out the have this thing up and going because I might just get it going anyway we got some other things going on in personal life and other irons in the fire and getting close to Christmas so it may slow me down just a little bit but I'll try to get this going and get it ready and so we can you can see that finished before the end of the year anyway and i've got some of these knobs from another heath kit that's i don't know if i restore or beyond restoring uh not this here but this same in the same year they use this gray paint or this uh, brown light tan brown tan paint whatever you want to call it and this style of knob and these didn't come with knobs down here and these are uh, Verner, Verner, <laughs> if I can get it spit out. These two here are, you see, let's show you real quick. If you're taking something apart and looking at it, and you see this distinctive, see those three big balls? Let's get this other one in a shot here, yeah. You see those three big balls in there? This here is probably, I've not checked it, probably three to one. But if we turn it one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Well, not really eight. I have to look at that up, but anyway, it makes it a lot. Instead of from here, you know, from here, like say your potentiometer was here, I say on the knob, and you turn it to here, and that's where it stops, like a volume controller, like an old volume controller or something. Where you just there and there, and that's it. Bang, bang, one turn, which makes it things happen, you know, really quick with these Werner dials. You know, or these multi-turn pots. It takes several turns. So it slowly is going across that track inside of there. So it makes it a lot easier instead of the needle jumping around. You're trying to zero it out. And you're like, man, I can't get it just perfect. And you're like, touch, touch, touch. Trying to barely touch it. This here, you can, you know, it might take a half a turn for it just to barely move up. Um... So, and also these are designed here too, so you can bring that needle up to the center here if you want to use it. And uh, you probably can see that. Let's zoom in anyway. You see this zero here at the bottom, so you can use it. When you're checking decibels and stuff like that. You can put that right in the center to you know see which way it's moving. So, anyway, there you have it. The first look at this thing and. I'll get it cleaned up, get it the parts changed out, and then we'll fire it up and go through the alignment procedure, and I'll put this thing into use. Let me get the so anyway. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, I always got some interesting videos coming out here and there, and I've got more stuff in mind. So, until the next video, this is Michael, KE4EST, 73.